The future's here, and it's about to start getting insane. Technological development in recent years has been pretty crazy. Just think about what a smartphone can do now compared to one of those huge bricks from the 80s. Or even how far we've come since playing Snake on our Nokias back in the early 2000s. But it's not just smartphones that are changing. New tech is going to completely change our lives in ways you can hardly imagine. From the new brand of virtual glasses to the satellite launcher that changes everything. Here's 20 emerging technologies that will change our world. <sighs> Number 20. Mojo Vision's Prototypes Invisible computing is what Mojo Vision is all about. The founders of the company hail from places like Apple, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft, so it's a pretty big venture. They want to make us less dependent on screens. Instead of taking out your phone to see why it vibrated in the middle of a conversation, you merely have to look to the corner of your eye to activate an interface that'll tell you in a split second what some troll on Twitter just commented on your profile about. Awesome. I can't wait. But I might have to, because it's actually not easy to make smart contact lenses. Alphabet's subsidiary Verily had to refocus its smart lens program after running into some major problems. You need the right sensors and the right sizes, enough power to make everything work, a display, and an image sensor. These sensors include things like custom wireless radios and motion sensors for tracking the eyes and the stabilizing of the image. If you wear the lens and look straight ahead, you won't see anything that It'll alter your vision. But if you look in any corner, icons like a calendar, the weather, notifications, music playback, and more could appear. So would you want to wear your phone screen on your eyes? Let us know in the comments. We're actually really curious about this one. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Spin Launch An American company has tried out a way to send satellites into space that uses a high-speed spinning machine instead of conventional rockets. The machine, which runs on kinetic energy, is meant to make satellite launches much cheaper and use way less fuel. Spin Launch is located in California, and that's where they made the system. A test launch happened recently at a private space launch complex in the western state of New Mexico called Spaceport America. The company said that payloads from several groups, including the American space agency NASA, were used in the tests. Spin Launch said in a statement that all of the test payloads were flown and recovered successfully. It didn't say anything about what the payloads were, though. Oh, what's that? You want to know what I would fire into space using kinetic energy? How about those uh, Twitter trolls from earlier? Anyway, the suborbital accelerator from Spin Launch was a success in the test. It's a 33 meter steel structure with a spinning arm that's powered by electricity. Inside the accelerator is a satellite. The fast turning of the system creates kinetic energy that's meant to spin the satellite faster than five times the speed of sound. The suborbital accelerator is made to send the satellite into an orbit close to Earth, about 2,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Spin Launch wants to keep adding to its technology and equipment so it can send things into even higher orbits. Something about this just kind of blows my mind. Number 18. Graphene and Graphene Oxide Graphene is a hexagonal lattice of carbon atoms that are only one atom thick. That's, like, really, really, really thin. Graphene is the building block of graphite, which is used in things like pencil tips, but it's also a very interesting substance on its own. It has a lot of other amazing properties that have earned it the name the wonder material more than one time. At one atom thick, graphene is the thinnest material that we know of. It's also very strong, about 200 times stronger than steel. Graphene is also a great conductor of both heat and electricity, and it can absorb light in really interesting ways. It's a material that could honestly change the world because it could be used in almost any industry. Graphene has also made its way into consumer electronics. For example, Huawei's top-of-the-line smartphones use graphene film cooling technology to deal with heat. Ford's another well-known company that uses graphene. In its 2019 F-150 and Mustang cars, Ford used graphene re reinforced foam to cover noisy parts. When graphene is mixed with foam, Ford says that the parts are 17% quieter, 20% stronger, and 30% more resistant to heat. Which is cool, unless you like your Mustang nice and loud, I guess. Number 17. G5 
GPS-3. Since 1993, the U.S. Air Force has allowed the rest of the world to use its Global Positioning System, better known as GPS. Since then, this technology has become a part of our daily lives. It's in our phones, our cars, and even our watches. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that the U.S. keeps putting money into developing the technology for both civilian and military use, and that money is about to pay off big time with the latest development. GPS-3 is already in the process of being put to use. It already has has two satellites in orbit, and eight more are in various stages of development. Here's what you can expect when the next generation of GPS is fully operational in 2023. The GPS-2 system that we have now works well, but GPS-3 is going to be a whole lot better. The next version of GPS should be three times more accurate than the current version. This means that the accuracy of the current GPS technology, which is about 5 to 10 meters, will drop to just 1 to 3 meters. And the signal is going to be stronger, so it'll be able to get through annoying interference and all kinds of positioning and tracking will become insanely accurate. Now, if I can just figure out where I left my car keys. Number 16. Smart Floating Farms both Karma and Courage the cows are very special cows. They can see the whole harbor of Rotterdam, go to the bathroom on a literal poop deck, and walk that gangplank to a pasture. They and 32 other cows from the Meuse Rhine Issel region of the Netherlands live on the world's first floating dairy farm. Every day, cows eat potato peels and grass clippings and then let out more than 5,700 pounds of dung which is picked up by a robot that looks like a Roomba and dumped down a shaft to a deck below. There, the poop is turned into fertilizer for the grass on soccer fields and in parks. About five gallons of milk are taken from each cow by another robot. I'm glad to hear the poop robot isn't the milking robot too. The milk is put in bottles or made into yogurt and trucked to go to grocery stores. Experts say that big floating farms would be too expensive and would need too many resources to really be viable. But the inventor hopes that seeing cows graze Raising on a boat will make people think of new ways to grow food in the future. To feed the world's 9.8 billion people in 2050, humans will have to make 56% more food, so we're going to need to put a lot of cows floating on a lot of bodies of water out there to feed all those hungry mouths. Number 15. Edge Computing Edge computing is a new way of thinking about computers that involves a number of networks and devices that are on or near the user. Edge is about the processing data closer to where it's actually being created. This lets data be processed at higher speeds and larger amounts, which leads to better results that can be acted on in real time. It's got some advantages that just aren't found in traditional models, where all the computing power is kept in one place at a data center. Self-driving cars, robots that operate by themselves, smart equipment data, Data, and automated retail are all examples of edge computing. At the edge, the most sensitive data is processed and the most important systems are powered. These places need solutions that have low latency and they don't need to connect to a network. What's so exciting about edge technology is that it has the potential to change businesses in every industry and function, from interacting with customers and marketing to production and back office operations. Number 14, self-healing concrete. A brand new type of concrete is now a reality, and it's a concrete that amazingly can just fix itself. It works like the way that wounds on the body heal themselves by secreting some kind of special substance. To make self-healing concrete, certain materials like fibers or capsules that contain adhesive liquids are added to the concrete mix. When the crack happens, the fibers or capsules will break, releasing the liquid inside, which will fix the crack right away. Self-healing concrete, on the other hand, is still in the research phase, though it's still a long way from being used in the concrete business. Because regular concrete doesn't have a very high tensile strength, it often cracks. And these cracks make concrete less durable because they make it easy for liquids and gases that could contain harmful substances to move through the concrete. When micro cracks get bigger and reach the reinforcement, they can damage not just the concrete, but also the steel bars that hold it all together. So it's important to keep the cracks from getting too big and to fix them as soon as possible. So basically, cracks in concrete that can fix themselves would make structures last longer and make the material not just more durable, but also more sustainable. And that's a good thing. I don't know if you've seen any of our videos that talk about like trash piles in the ocean, but we, we need some more sustainable in our lives. Number 13. Hydrogen Fuel Cell 
Now we're going to take a look at hydrogen fuel cells. The chemical energy of hydrogen is used by a hydrogen fuel cell to generate electricity. It's a clean source of energy that only makes electricity, heat, and water as byproducts. And fuel cells can have many uses from transportation to emergency backup power. They can power systems as big as a power plant or as small as a laptop. Hydrogen fuel cells are better than traditional combustion-based technologies because they're much more efficient and they put out less pollution. Since hydrogen fuel cells only give off water, they don't put any carbon dioxide or other harmful gases into the air. And because they have fewer moving parts than combustion technologies, fuel cells are also quiet when they're in use. Today, there's several ways to make hydrogen fuel. For example, light is used to make hydrogen in processes that are powered by the sun. Electrolysis is a process that can be used to separate water into oxygen and hydrogen. An electrolyzer is a device that uses electricity to do the opposite of what a fuel cell does. Instead of using the energy from a hydrogen molecule like a fuel cell does, an electrolyzer makes hydrogen from water molecules. So, in plain terms, all you need is plenty of water and you got fuel for everybody. Number 12. The Man-Made Stars Changing the Sky Out of the 6,000 stars that can be seen with the naked eye from Earth, there's a few that are easy to spot and have special meaning. Sailors have used the Polaris or North Star to help them find their way for thousands of years because it seems to stay in the same place in the Northern Hemisphere. As our reliance on space technology grows, hundreds of new satellites are launched every year, making the sky more and more crowded. Even though most of us will only see them briefly as they pass over our heads, they are already giving astronomers trouble as they look out into the universe. Russian startup Start Rocket has said that it wants to send up to 300 small satellites with retractable reflective sails into low Earth orbit. Once they get there, they can be put together like pixels on a screen to make company logos look like star-like constellations as the sun shines on them. It would mean that for about six minutes every night, we'd look up and see the first constellations that were branded for business. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. An astrophysicist at the University of Cambridge says that capitalism has reached stratospheric heights. She's nailed it there. Gina Halabi went on to say, I'm 100% against this space pollution and commodification of the night sky. And Gina, I agree with you 100%. The last thing I want to see is a Starbuck glowing constellation over my head every night. Number 11. GPT-3 Powers Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3 is an autoregressive language model that uses deep learning to make text that sounds just like it was written by a person. So it works like this. If you give it some text as a starting point, it'll come up with text that continues on from what you gave it. The quality of the text that GPT-3 creates is so high, it can be hard to tell if it was written by a human or not. This has both pros and cons. Back in 2020, Microsoft said that it had licensed exclusive use of GPT-3. Other people can still use the public API to get output, but only Microsoft has access to GPT-3's underlying model. However, 31 researchers and engineers from OpenAI presented the first paper on GPT-3 on May 28th of 2020. In their paper, they wrote about the possible dangers of GPT-3 and asked for research to reduce risk. So Microsoft are freaking out about misinformation, disinformation, and fake news while at the same time building technology that'll make AI fake news completely indistinguishable from human writing. Hmm, what are they up to exactly? Number 10. Connected Home A connected home is networked so devices, services, and apps can connect together and work to keep your home running smoothly. You get that app for descaling the shower downloaded and that'll save you a lot of annoyance, I think. People living in a connected home can control and monitor their home from inside and from outside of it. But it'll be a while before the market reaches its full potential according to experts. Many consumers still don't know what the point of all these connected devices is, and early adopters have a lot of problems that haven't been resolved yet. Even though there's a lot of possibilities, the dream homes that are fully connected are still a long way off. We haven't seen explosive growth in the market yet, but players who are well positioned can still make a ton of money as curiosity grows among people who want to live inside of a giant iPhone. Number 9. Lithium Metal Battery Researchers have made a promising battery for electric cars that lasts longer than ever before. 
This is a big step towards the goal of making batteries for future electric cars that are lighter, cheaper, and last longer. And that's been a pretty big drawback to electric cars so far, recharging the damn things more often than a 10-year-old burner phone. These batteries are seen as an important part of the solution to reducing the effects of climate change too. A lithium metal battery for electric vehicles is one thing that could really help. These batteries have almost twice as much power as the lithium ion batteries that are usually used, and they weigh less. With that combination, it'd be possible to make an electric car that's lighter and can go much farther on one single charge. It's a big step forward for a technology that has a ton of potential, but lithium metal technology still isn't ready for prime time. Even though lithium ion batteries used in electric cars today hold less energy, they they last longer, usually at least a thousand charges compared to just 600 for lithium metal at best. But cars won't be able to go as far on a single charge as they could with lithium metal batteries that work well, and advancements are being made all the time. Number 8. 3D Printing 3D printing is a way to make solid objects with three dimensions from a digital file. With 3D printing, you can make complicated shapes with less material than traditional methods. In its early stages, 3D printing was only good for making prototypes and one-offs. Now, however, it's quickly becoming a production technology. Most of the demand for 3D printing right now comes from the business world. Acumen Research and Consulting thinks that by 2026, the global market for 3D printing will be worth a whopping $41 billion. 3D printing has already been used by car companies for a long time. Automakers are printing spare parts, tools, jigs, fixtures, and even parts that'll be used in the final product. 3D printing has made it possible to make things on demand, which has led to less stock and shorter design and production cycles. So this is one tech that looks to change the way we make things forever. Who knows what the future might hold? One day you might be able to just print your own car at home. Number seven, blockchain. Blockchain is a system for recording information in such a way that it makes it hard or even impossible to change, hack, or cheat the system. A blockchain is a network of computers that share a digital ledger of transactions. This ledger is copied and sent to all of the computers on the network. Each block in the chain has a number of transactions in it, and when a new transaction happens on the blockchain, a recording of it is added to the ledger of every participant. This means that if just one block in a chain was changed, it'd be clear right away that it had been changed. If hackers wanted to mess up a blockchain system, they'd have to change every block in every copy of the chain, which is basically impossible. Trust is the main problem with digital currency. How can we be sure that if someone makes a new currency called the X dollar, they won't give themselves a million X dollars or steal your millions of X dollars? Bitcoin was made as a solution to this type of problem by using a special kind of database called a blockchain. Most normal databases have a person in charge who can change the entries, but blockchain is different because no one's in charge, it's run by the people who use it. What's more, Bitcoins can't be faked, hacked, or double spent, so people that own this money can trust that it does have some value. Until the market crashes completely again and it ends up with no value. Where are my Dogecoins, by the way? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I, I didn't buy any Dogecoins, I, I knew better. Number six, using sound waves to fight wildfires. Wildfires in places like California and Australia are killing people and putting humanity and the planet at risk. In the midst of growing destruction, technology is offering a solution that was once thought to be impossible using sound waves to put out forest fires. The acoustic extinguisher works by using sound waves, which are a type of pressure wave, to push oxygen away from the source of a flame and spread it over a larger area. These things break the fire combustion triangle, which is made up of heat, fuel, and oxygen. These are the three things that a fire needs to burn. So the acoustic fire extinguisher doesn't use water or chemicals to put out fires. Instead, it just uses a low frequency base to do the job. In 2008, the US Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency tried to use acoustic technology to fight fires, but they didn't work. But a pair of inventors called Robertson and Tran didn't let the fact that they'd failed before or that their classmates and teachers were skeptical stop them from solving the problem. They did this by adding vortex rings, which move particles in circles around a central core. 
and allow sound waves to travel further without losing mass or kinetic energy. Sensors in RSAC's system can find a heat bloom and then send out spikes at a certain frequency that can be used to track the flow of a fire. Then drones can be sent to keep an eye on the fire from above, and sound wave fire extinguishers can be aimed at the right direction along property lines to create an acoustic fire barrier. Pretty cool! Number 5. Quantum Computing Quantum computing is a branch of computer science that uses the ideas of quantum theory. Quantum theory describes how energy and matter behave at the atomic and subatomic levels. Electrons and protons, which are subatomic particles, are used in quantum computing. Quantum bits, or qubits, allow these particles to be in both one and zero states at the same time. Theoretically, qubits that are linked can exploit the interference between their wave-like quantum states to perform calculations that might otherwise take millions of years. Classical computers use a stream of electrical pulses, known simply as 1 and 0, in a binary way to store information in bits. Compared to quantum computing, this limits how much they can do. Quantum computing can sort through a huge number of possible outcomes and find possible answers to complex problems and challenges. Qubits are used to store information in quantum computers, while bits are used in traditional computers. Qubits store information in a quantum state that uses 0 and 1 in a way that works in more than one dimension. Some of the biggest companies in the world are interested in it because it's got so much computing power and it's expected to have a huge market impact. Quantum computing could make a big difference in security, finance, military affairs and intelligence, drug design and discovery, aerospace design, utilities like nuclear fusion, polymer design, machine learning, artificial intelligence, big data search, and digital manufacturing. That's a whole lot of words to say this could change everything. Number 4. Self-Driving Cars an autonomous car is a vehicle that can sense its surroundings and drive itself without any help from a human. A human passenger isn't required to take control of the vehicle at any time, nor is a human passenger required to be in the vehicle at all. A self-driving car can go anywhere a regular car can go and do everything that a skilled human driver could do. Autonomous cars use sensors in different parts of the car to make up a map of their surroundings and keep it up to date. Radar sensors keep track of where nearby vehicles are. Video cameras can pick up on traffic lights read road signs, keep an eye on other cars, and even look for people that are walking. Light detection and ranging sensors bounce pulses of light off the car's surroundings to measure distances, find the edges of the road, and figure out where the lanes are. When parking, ultrasonic sensors in the wheels can find curbs and other cars. Then, sophisticated software takes all of this information, plots a path, and tells the car's actuators how to speed up, slow down, turn, and steer. The software can follow traffic rules, and avoid obstacles with the help of hard-coded rules, algorithms for avoiding obstacles, predictive modeling, and object recognition. Meaning you can kick back and relax and let the car do all the driving. If you're trying to decide if you want to use an autonomous car, I definitely don't recommend Googling Tesla autopilot accidents. Don't, don't do it. Number 3. Virtual Reality and Augmented Reality Augmented reality and virtual reality are technologies that add to or replace the real world with a computer-generated one. Augmented reality, aka AR, adds digital elements to your view of the real world. This is usually done with a camera on a smartphone. Virtual reality, or VR, is an experience that completely immerses you in a simulated version of the real world. In AR, a virtual world is made to coexist with the real one. The goal is to make the virtual world informative and add information about the real world that a user can access without having to search for it. For example, when a phone is pointed at a piece of broken equipment, industrial AR apps could show how to fix it the right way. Virtual reality is a full simulation of the environment that replaces the user's world with a completely fake one. Since these virtual worlds are all made up, they're often made to be bigger than real life. For example, a VR user could box in a virtual ring with a cartoon version of Mike Tyson. Both virtual reality and augmented reality are meant to give the user a simulated environment, but each is different and can be used in very different ways. Augmented reality isn't just used for entertainment anymore. Businesses are taking advantage of it more and more because it can add useful information to real-world scenarios. Number 2. Gene therapy. 
Gene therapy is a way to treat or prevent disease by fixing the genetic problem at the root of the problem. Gene therapy is a way for doctors to treat diseases without using drugs or surgery. Instead, they just change a person's genes. The first method of gene therapy, which is sometimes called gene transfer or gene addition, was made to add a new gene to cells to help fight a disease or to add a normal copy of a gene to replace the one that was changed and causing the disease. Some diseases, like a condition related Related to the eye is called Leber congenital amaurosis, and a problem with the muscles called spinal muscular atrophy are now being treated with gene therapies. Research is being done on a lot more gene therapies to make sure that they're safe and effective. Genome editing is another promising technique that doctors are looking into and hope to soon use to treat diseases. And this could be a major game changer in modern health. Number 1. Cultured Meat Cultivated meat, which is also called cultured meat, is a real animal meat like seafood and organ meats, and it's made by directly cultivating animal cells. With this method, there's no need to raise and farm animals to make food. Cultivated meat is made of the same kinds of cells that are arranged in the same or a very similar way in animal tissues. All of that means that it tastes and has the same nutritional value as regular meat, but it never had to be a part of any living animal. In 2013, Mark Post, a Dutch scientist, scientist showed the world the first burger made from meat grown in a lab. Within two years, the first four companies that cultivated meat were launched. Since then, the industry has grown to include more than 60 companies on six continents, with more than $450 million invested in them. Each of these companies wants to make cultivated meat products. The Singapore Food Agency gave the green light for the world's first meat product grown in a lab to go on sale in December of 2020. Shortly after that, the approved cultivated chicken nugget made by Eat Just in California was sold commercially for the very first time. Do you want to try a lab-grown chicken nugget, or do you prefer your nuggets from a real chicken? So, do you think these new technologies will improve our world, or turn it into some kind of tech nightmare? To be honest, whether the world gets full of tech bros or terminators, eh, it's about the same for me. Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.